Dr. Benita Rattan. I'm a doctor, but I'm also a cosmetic formulator specifically for skin or color. So today's video is something that a lot of parents worry about, um, but is extremely common, especially for kids of color. So white patches can develop in our children, particularly in the summer. There are two main causes of it, and neither of them are really anything to be concerned about. One is called pityriasis vesicular, and one is called pityriasis alba. This video is gonna go through what it is, how to treat it, um, and the mistakes that people tend to make. If that sounds good to you, give me a thumbs up. Let's dive right in. So I think the main reason that parents worry is because they think it's a beginning of vitiligo, but vitiligo is very different. Vitiligo is an autoimmune condition whereby your immune system literally attacks the melanocytes and kills them. Your melanocytes are the cells that produce the pigment melanin. This is why with vitiligo you have a, a stark white contrast with a defined border next to your brown or tan skin. And, and it tends to spread and it tends to be in different parts of the body compared to pityriasis vesicular and alba. So the first thing to look at is, is it, does it have a faded edge? And is it completely stark white or is it just a lighter color than the surrounding tissue? Because vitiligo is, has a very distinctive whiteness and is quite stark compared to pityriasis vesicular or alba. So pityriasis vesicular is a fungal infection and it tends to feel itchy or you may have no symptoms at all. It, the distribution tends to be either on the back, the chest or the tummy. It tends to be small white patches that may then join up and it's very common, caused by a yeast called malassezia. Now malassezia is on 90% of adults, so it's on a vast majority of us. The only time you start to see these white patches is when they proliferate and they overproduce. This tends to happen when it's summer because you you now have an environment which is warm and moist, which is perfect for back, uh, for fungus to multiply. It tends to be more common in your teens and twenties compared to pityriasis alba, which is when you're a bit younger than that. This is not a hygiene issue. I want to reiterate that. I know it sounds scary, especially when you say the word fungal infection, you think, oh my goodness, I haven't washed enough. I haven't cleaned myself enough. That's just not the case. It's just that this is the environment that these fungi that are already on your skin um, and yeast that are already on your skin um, just multiply in. And it's, you know, it's pretty normal. This is why you see it. It's very common for skin of color. Because they tend to multiply in warm, moist areas, I would also say you want to avoid tight clothing or um, dressings or moisturizers that are thick occlusives in the area that you're getting um, the pityriasis vesicular in order to prevent it from spreading. Now, pityriasis alba usually starts off as a pink scaly patch, which then uh, will resolve and form almost like a white diffuse mark. Um, again, it's not like vitiligo because you don't have that stark whiteness with a distinctive border that you can almost draw. It has tends also to have a diffuse border as well. Now, the reason pityriasis alba is more obvious in the summer is because our babies are tanning and they're running around in the sun and so they're getting darker. And so the white patch appears lighter. And this is why with kids of color, they have all these light patches on their faces and bodies that you don't tend to see in Caucasian babies. And this then leads to panic in our skin of color family for all the parents. So this is why I wanted to make this video to reassure you that it's absolutely normal. It's just something that we don't discuss enough. So you tend to find pityriasis alba on the cheeks, the chin, around the mouth area, and also on the body. So it can tend to be on the arms, the legs, so pityriasis alba you'll find in more areas than vesicular. 
And if you go and see your doctor about it, they don't do, you know, a biopsy or anything. It's a visual analysis because it literally is that common. Now, when it comes to vesicular um, and treating it, we want to use antifungals. So things like ketoconazole shampoo are excellent. What I would do is lather it up and leave it on the area for about five to 10 minutes and wash it off. Just make sure that it's diluted before you put it on a child's skin because you don't put the shampoo directly onto the skin and leave it. Um, it's a wash off product. So lather it, leave it on for five or 10 minutes and then wash it off. What I would do is to do it for about seven days. So do it every day for seven days. Um, it is a stubborn condition and it may take months or even years to resolve. So, you know, it's not something to be too concerned with. The other shampoo you can use is selenium sulfide, but that is quite drying. So I'd say start with a ketoconazole. The other potential option are ketoconazole ketoconazole creams especially if it's a small area um, because that that's also leave on so it tends to be a little bit stronger I would also say that it tends to reoccur so what I would say is before the summer in spring start using using ketoconazole shampoo as a body wash on your children to preventatively um, preempt the pitoriasis vesicular it's just you know, it's not a guaranteed treatment and it just takes so long to resolve that it's, if it's something that you're really worried about, um, then it's just a good step. Now, pitoriasis alba doesn't really have any medical treatment for it. It tends to resolve by itself. It tends to come back every summer. Um, what I would say is if it's feeling dry or, or, or irritated, then I would moisturize the area. But what makes it look darker is when you tan. So what I would say is be vigilant with your SPF 50, especially, especially with kids when they're running around and they're jumping in the water. Um, you do need to keep reapplying it, even though, you know, our babies are wriggly and they don't like sunscreen. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, we often don't top up as much as we really should but um, it's just the best way to prevent the tan and then to prevent um, the starkness between the white area, white patch, and then the darkening tan. If vitiligo is your main concern, the next video I'm making after this actually is how to treat vitiligo. So I um, encourage you to go over and have a quick look at that video too. Um, please can you write down below any other videos you want me to make. I'm in the comment section for one hour at the launch of every single video so do hit that notification bell. Please follow me on Instagram which is skincare by Dr. V and Dr. Benita Rattan and also on TikTok which is Dr. Benita Rattan. Don't forget to download your skincare guide, your free skincare guide which is down below too. So I will see you next time. Take care, bye!